morning children so we had a <coughs> very long and extended holidays and it is a time for us to be back with our books right so before we start our lesson we have a small prayer let's pray uh, we should pray to god because he had been very kind throughout this difficult time and uh, he had given us a lot of things like the nature around us, the natural things in there, the plants, the hills, the mountains, the birds, the animals, the flowers, the fruits, everything, everything that we enjoy on this earth is his. Every morning when we wake up and uh, when we look outside, whatever we see around us is given by God the Great Almighty. Okay. So before we start anything, uh, we usually have a habit of uh, offering a prayer as it is the case in English lessons also here uh, in this lesson. <coughs> we have a small prayer and we'll start with this prayer, right? Let's pray. I look at the bright sun rays and smile. A new day has begun and I think of why. The lofty mountains and each tiny stone, the big oceans and little dewdrops all shone. Sunshine has flooded every nook and corner of this world. All creatures and even tiny butterflies with wings unflurred. Look at the sky and praise God every eve and morn for peace and beauty that exist here in various forms. I joined them and bow my head. For the world belonged to all, as the wise said. We can never praise God enough in our words. Be life smooth going or tough on the traded roads. So now we have prayed and we have thanked Him for all that He has provided for, the, for us on this earth. And uh, yeah, now we are going to the lesson. So we know there are different kinds of festivals. We have learned about these festivals and all in our younger classes. And uh, <coughs> religious festivals are there, national festivals are there also. No? So which are the national festivals? <coughs> One. Independence Day that happens on August 15, second Republic Day which falls on Jan 26, January 26. So these two are the major or the national festivals that we have, right? So our national festivals are the Independence Day which is on August 15 every year and Republic Day which is on 26th of January every year. <coughs> now, how do we celebrate these uh, national festivals? Say for example, uh, Independence Day. We go to our school in the morning, well dressed and uh, there will be some guests will be there. Okay, there is an assembly and in assembly there will be a gust. And this dust will hoist the national flag, we will sing our uh, national song, not a national song. Our principal will talk, uh, talk to us, give us a message. The chief guest who has come to attend the program will give us a message. Some teachers also may give us some messages. Then uh, some of the friends, our friends, our classmates, our schoolmates will perform some programs on uh, national integrity and all at the end we will all sing national anthem together and there will be some sweet distribution chocolates or sweets or something like that and we disperse isn't it right so <clears throat> whom do we remember on this uh, occasion or when the headmaster or the chief guest or the teachers when they give us the messages whom do we remember in that we remember the freedom fighters. So what do you mean by freedom fighter? A freedom fighter is a person 
who had actively participated in the freedom movement of India. Okay, India was ruled by British, the British people for a long time and uh, we had to suffer a lot. For around 100 plus years, more than 100 years, our people struggled to get ourselves freed from the hands of these British people. Right? A lot of people like Bhagat Singh or Chandrasekhar Azad or uh, Lala Lajpat Rai. So these, they, they have a few people to name. There are very few people to name. Even before them we had Rani Lakshmi Bhai. Isn't it? So those kinds of people, they gave their life, they sacrificed their life in the fight against the British. Okay? So these people. We know the names of a very few people, but there are thousands of people whose name we do not know. Right? The, the names of thousands of people who followed these are just leaders. They led the people ahead. Like uh, Mahatma Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru or Sardar Vallabhai Patel. They were the people who came after them. <clears throat> it was under the leadership of these people we gained our freedom. Okay, so we remember the great people like uh, now whom we said like uh, Bhagat Singh or uh, Chandrasekhar Azad or uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose or even the uh, uh, Tantya Thopi or uh, Rani Lakshmi Bhai who gave their life, who sacrificed their life for the freedom of our nation. Because we should remember them, we should respect them every time. We should know about them, then only we can start respecting them because they sacrificed their lives, they gained the freedom for India and that is why we people are now able to live with this kind of a freedom on India. Right? We people are able to live freely in this country of India because they people, they, they those people, they sacrificed their life for the noble reason of gaining freedom for our country okay so now uh, we have a girl called Tara we have a girl called Tara in this lesson her grandmother her grandmother who is a very old lady now was once a freedom fighter. When she was a small girl, she participated in the freedom movement. Okay, now she is expressing some uh, some of her experiences with her Tara. In this experience, she, the grandfather, grandmother of her Tara, is explaining about one particular person. And our lesson today is about this freedom fighter Aruna Asif Ali That's our lesson Aruna Asif Ali Aruna Asif Ali The Freedom Fighter So what's the lesson that we are going to learn today? It's Aruna Asif Ali The Freedom Fighter So it was as usual uh, on August 15th and Independence Day and these celebrations like the flag hoisting and the people gathering and the people giving messages these are given not only in schools in a common centers are there no? like uh, junctions are there so some areas will be there so for one particular area there will be one particular place where they do these kinds of things so uh, in their area where uh, Tara and her grandmother was living they organized this Independence Day celebration there and they invited Tara's grandmother as a chief guest. Why Tara's grandmother was invited as a chief guest? Because she was once a participant in the freedom movement. So she was a freedom fighter once when, when she was a small girl. Right? 
So Tara's grandmother, being a freedom fighter once, she was invited to hoist the flag. Hoist means what? Yeah, to raise the flag on a pole is called a hoisting. Okay. So her grandmother was called there, invited there as a chief guest. She went there, she hoisted the flag, the people sung the national anthem, Janaganamana Adunaya Kechehe. They saluted the flag, they did everything and uh, gave some message also. <coughs> okay? She spoke about the importance of how this uh, younger generation has to take care or respect the elders or the freedom fighters, how they struggle during the time of freedom movement and all. And they distributed the sweets and they came back. <coughs> right? Tara and her grandmother, they were going back to the home. At that time, Tara had a doubt. So Tara asked her doubt. Tara asked her doubt to her grandmother. She said, Grandmother, your message was very good, fantastic. And uh, but I have a question. Who inspired you to join this freedom movement? So she asked, who inspired you to join freedom movement? Even we do follow the same. No? We follow, some people get inspired by their parents. Some people get inspired by their uncles or aunts or somebody like that. Some people get inspiration from a players or a people like a Sachin Tendulkar or a Saurav Ganguly or a uh, players like that, Sanya Mirza or uh, Saina Nehwal or uh, PV Sindhu, they become sports persons. Some people take inspiration from uh, movie actors to become uh, movie actors. So even we do the same thing. So at that time when uh, Tara's uh, grandmother was a small girl, she also might have taken inspiration from somebody and she too might have followed the steps of those people to become a freedom fighter. Right? So she asks the question, who did inspire you to become a freedom fighter? And Tara's uh, grandmother said, it was Aruna Asaf Ali. Okay, so who inspired Tara's grandmother to become a freedom fighter? It was Aruna Asaf Ali. So Aruna Asaf Ali is a very famous freedom fighter. She is an educationalist. She was a social activist who worked for the welfare of women and all. And she was the first lady mayor of Delhi Corporation also. We have a corporation with the mayors and all. Yeah, Delhi was a corporation and the Delhi corporation's first mayor was a, I don't know, Asaf Ali. So when uh, Tara's grandmother said it was Aruna Asaf Ali who inspired me to become uh, a freedom fighter, Tara got, uh, you know, curious. How did she inspire you? What is that thing that is famous or uh, that curious that made you follow the steps of Aruna Asaf Ali? So now, Tara's grandmother started saying Tara about uh, Aruna Asaf Ali. <coughs> okay? So we too will follow the steps of uh, Tara's grandmother and we too will learn about uh, her grandmother. Right? Aruna Asaf Ali. So Aruna Asaf Ali was born not as Aruna Asaf Ali. When she was born, uh, Aruna Asaf Ali was born on uh, 16th July 1908. Okay? So Aruna was born on 16th July 1908 or yeah 1908 and when she was born she was named as Aruna Ganguly okay so she belonged to the family of Ganguly it's a surname Ganguly is actually the surname right uh, so she was named as Aruna Ganguly 
and uh, she was born at Kalka. Is a region in uh, the state of Punjab. Okay. So Aruna Asafali was born as Aruna Ganguly on 16th July 1908 at Kalka, Punjab in a Bengali family. Bengali Brahmo family. So they are basically Bengalis. Bengalis means yeah, people from West Bengal. Uh, Ganguly is a common surname for a people who are in a West Bengal. That's why we have Saru Ganguly. He is also from Calcutta, West Bengal. Na? Yeah. So Aruna Ganguly was born on 16th July 1908 at a place called Kalka in Punjab and she was born in a Bengali Brahmo family. Means the family were basically from Banga, West Bengal, and it was a Brahmo family. What do you mean by Brahmo family? Yeah, we know uh, there was a freedom fighter called uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy. There was a freedom fighter called uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, and he was a person who fought for the rights of women, who stopped the Sati system who encouraged the video marriages, who encouraged the women education, did a lot of things. And so as to spread his ideologies, he started a, 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 an organization called Brahma Samaj. He started an organization called Brahma Samaj. And those people who believed in those concepts were known as Brahmas. Right? So, the Bengali family where Aruna Ganguly was born actually believed in the concepts of Brahma Samaj. Okay? They usually believed, they, they believed. Means women should get education, they are not bound to be held at home and do the household works. Right? They should have the right to do the job and take care of the family. Okay? Women empowerment we call it. We call it women empowerment. Okay? So, the family where Aruna Ganguly was born, they believed in these concepts. They believed in these concepts and that is why they are known as a Bengali Brahmo family. <coughs> right? So, Aruna Asafali was born as Aruna Ganguly. So, her initial name was Aruna Ganguly. Okay? She was born on 16th July 1908. She was born in a Kalka, Punjab. Maybe her father was working there. Maybe. Then she belonged to a Bengali family. So as they believed in Brahma, Brahma Samajan policies, uh, Aruna Asafali got a good education. She did her education in two places. The first place is uh, Lahore. Now Lahore is a place in Pakistan. We know India was uh, divided into India and Pakistan after the freedom means it happened in 1947 isn't it so india was divided into pakistan india and east pakistan now we call it bangladesh in 1947 but she was when she was a child when aruna asafali was a child means in 1908 and all it was all a single region Right from Pakistan, entire India, including Bangladesh, everything was a single region. <coughs> okay, so she was in Punjab, she was born in Punjab, her family was in Punjab, and Lahore lies very close to Punjab province, Punjab region. In Pakistan, also, we have a Punjab region, right? So, Lahore was very close to them. So, she went for schooling in Lahore. And her uh, further education she had in a Naini top. Right? She had in a Naini top. So, what is Naini top? Yeah, Tal in Hindi means lake. Okay? So, in uh, Uttarakhand, there is a region called uh, a lake which is actually given as an offering for a goddess called Naini. So the lake of goddess 
Naini is what is called as Naini Talk. It is a place actually. It's a valley. It's a very beautiful place. And uh, obviously a uh, most important tourist attraction also. A very important uh, tourist attraction in that uh, region, especially in North India. Okay. A lot of people go there as a tourism purpose. And there are good number of schools also. Educational institutions also. From long ago itself. <coughs> So as such, uh, she had her education in uh, Lahore, which is now in Pakistan, and in uh, Nainital, which is in Uttarakhand. Okay. So after completing her education, after completing her education, she started to work as a teacher in a school in West Bengal, Calcutta. Okay. Earlier it was called Calcutta. Now it is known as a Kolkata. Okay. So earlier it was known as a Calcutta, like how? C U L C U T T A. Now it is known as a Kolkata. Right? Now it is known as a Kolkata. So when she was working there and there, then she got married. So whom did she marry? She married a person called a Asaf Ali. She married a person called a Asaf Ali, and she married Asaf Ali in uh, 1928. So she was born at 1908, and she got married at. Uh, 1928 means she was just a 20 years old at that time. She was just a 20 years old. So Asaf Ali was an active member in Indian National Congress. She was an active Asaf Ali. He was active in the Indian National Congress. Okay, he was a very active participant of a Indian National Congress. Now, what is Indian National Congress? Indian National Congress was an association which was organized for the purpose of getting our freedom. Okay, uh, different kinds of movements were happening in different parts of India, but they were not joined. Some people are fighting here, some people are fighting there, some people are fighting elsewhere. So Indian National Congress was actually formed in 1885. Okay, and the purpose of this uh, organization was nothing else but uh, to bring all the fighters on a common platform. They will have some understanding between, in, in among them. Okay, so what is happening in our area, what is happening in your area, how we have to fight against it. So they will discuss, they will organize some programs and then they will fight against the British. Okay, so Asif, uh, Asif Ali was a prominent figure as far as the Indian freedom movement was concerned as he participated very actively in the Indian National Congress. Uh, it was after the marriage, Aruna Ganguly became Aruna Asif Ali. Okay, so she added the name of her husband Asaf Ali along with her name and she became Aruna Asaf Ali. Now, Asaf Ali was an active participant in the National Freedom Movement and she got inspired by him. She uh, might have got the stories or the, what is happening around the place in India, what is happening in different parts, how the people are struggling, why the these kind of educated people like Aruna or Asaf Ali or uh, some other people why they have to come forward and lead the movement okay so Asaf Ali used to tell these kinds of things to Aruna and Aruna also got inspired and she too joined Indian National Congress as an active member active member means what yeah, they do go out and participate in these kinds of movements. 
So what kind of movements are happening there? A lot of movements are happening. Every day there will be protests will be happening, uh, no, uh, rallies will be happening on the streets. Huh? When uh, the British people are trying to sell something that they bring from uh, their country, we will stop them. And uh, they will be attacked by the British police. Because British police won't allow them to do see these kinds of things. Right? Sometimes what happens is these people will be arrested. They will be thrashed. They will be killed. But they are not afraid of these kinds of things that they had to face in their life. They are not afraid. They got thrashed today. But by evening they will organize another program. And the next day morning again they will be on the road. Again the police will, they will be coming on horseback. And they will make the horse to you know, kick these people. They use long sticks to thrash the people. They even fire shots at them and they kill them. Thousands of people have died but still more and more people came out of it. Because they all had only one particular aim and that was freedom of India. Right? So Aruna Asaf Ali, inspired by her husband Asaf Ali, came forward and joined the Indian National Congress and started working as an active partner. Clear? Now, it was a time when Mahatma Gandhi was leading these movements against the British. You know Mahatma Gandhi, Bapuji? Yeah, he was a, yeah, he is considered as the father of our nation. He was leading in the National Congress and he was actually leading all kinds of movements against the British. So in uh, 1930, she, uh, he organized the uh, Dandi March. Dandi March means what? Yeah, all the way from Sabarmadi to the Dandi uh, coastal area, he walked along with the people and he uh, brought salt water from the sea and made salt out of it. Okay? Because the British people were trying to sell their products over here and uh, we make our product, they sell it and they get the profit. Gandhiji said, no, we will make up our own things. Whatever we need to live over here, we will make our own things. So the first thing was that to make salt make salt for our purpose and we use the same salt. We won't buy salt from the British. Okay, that was known as a Dandi March. Right? Salt Satyagraha we call it. So then uh, in 1942, Quit India movement. Quit means go away. Quit India means go away from India. Thousands and thousands of people hit the road. They demanded the people to get out of our country right so <clears throat> he organized these kinds of movements like the Dandi March and uh, Quit India movement and uh, Arina Asafali came became famous with uh, her action in 1942 so 1942 was when we organized the Quit India movement against the British okay Quit India movement means we asked the British people to move out of our country so what these people decided was that uh, they have designed a flag for a Indian National Congress, right? So Indian National Congress was a huge organization at that time and they had their own flag also. So what they decided was that at Mumbai, in Bombay, Bombay, Bombay means now Mumbai, it's changed, the name is changed into Mumbai, okay. Now in Bombay, they will hoist the flag of Indian National Congress. So at that time, it was a big crime kind of a thing. The British people will never allow these kinds of things to happen anywhere in India. They won't allow. If you say Vande Mataram or Bharat Mata Ki Jai, they will thrash you like anything. They will thrash you out. Then, if you hoist our flag, what will happen? If they won't kill us, it's a great thing. So the biggest challenge on that particular movement in 1942, the Quit India movement was, who will hoist the flag in Bombay? 
So Bombay is a big city even at that time. Lot of people will get gathered there. Lot of British police people also will be there. And they will have anything and everything including gun. And it won't be a wonder if they will shoot you down. If they shoot you down it's not a wonder. They have done it earlier. No? In 1990 they did the Jalian Malabag massacre. Isn't it? So they won't dare to do. They are ready to do anything. They are ready to do anything. So, Haruna Asafali came forward to take the challenge of hoisting the flag at Bombay. When in 1942, the Quit India movement happened. In 1942, when the Quit India movement was happening in India, Haruna Asafali hoisted the flag of Indian National Congress at Bombay and she became a heroine. She became a heroine. Now, she became famous and even she, just because of this particular thing that she did during that Equity India movement in Bombay, she was called the Grand Old Lady of Independence Movement. Okay? The Grand Old Lady of Independence Movement. So, Aruna Asaf Ali is known as the Grand Old Lady of Independence because she dared to hoist the flag of Indian National Congress in Mumbai or Bombay when the Quit India Movement happened. After that, she got actively participating in uh, improving the standards of women. Right? So, to getting them educated, to make the parents convinced that they should send their children, the girl children in the school. They should not be bound out in the house. They should be allowed to do some jobs. They should be allowed to travel. If uh, the husband dies, they should be uh, you know, uh, encouraged to get married again. Not to waste a life like that. A lot of things. And for all these kinds of things that she had done during her life, she was acknowledged by the people, the country or even the worldwide associations many times. Okay? So what were the major achievements that Aruna Asafali had gained for her selfless activities for the humanity, especially women? The first one was the International Lenin Peace Prize. Uh, it was offered to her in 1964. So she was awarded with the International Peace Prize. Peace means uh, no peacefulness. Everything quiet, calm, controlling without any calamities and uh, agitations and all. Okay, that is known as a peace. So as to uh, encourage the uh, movements which spread the peacefulness without any violence and all, there is an international award which is named after Lenin, who was a leader of Russia. Okay, so the international Lenin Peace Prize was uh, uh, given to her in uh, 1964. Okay, in 1991. She was awarded the Jawaharlal Nehru Prize for International Understanding. Okay, it's another prize which is actually given for uh, the efforts that these people take to spread peacefulness among the countries. Okay, these people, see, these leaders were actually following the footprints of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Purely Mahatma Gandhi, where violence takes the last part. There is no position for violence in the protest. Peacefulness. Everything will be possible through peacefulness. That's a policy. Nothing else. Okay. So, she had her efforts in spreading this program throughout the world even. So, she was acknowledged for her efforts in that. Right. In 1992, in 1992, the government of India recognized her efforts either during the freedom struggle or even after that or whatever she had done for the greatness of the people around her. So these, all these activities that she had been doing for the greatness or for the improvement of the people around her was 
seen, observed, recognized by the government of India and we, the government of India, presented her with the Patna Vibhushan. So what is Patna Vibhushan? Uh, this is the second greatest civilian honor. Civilian means a common people. Common people. So, uh, common people in the sense for army people, for the soldiers, the Javans or the uh, or of, uh, army, they have got their own different uh, awards, like a Paramir Chakra kind of stuff. Okay? These people, ordinary people won't be counted for that. They are kept only for those categories in military. Okay? These are the common people, the other ordinary people who lives in the country. So because of for the efforts that they take or because of, or for the kind of service or greatness that they have done for the society, they are often awarded with these kinds of positions. So in 1992, she was awarded with Patna Vibhushan. The government of India recognized her efforts with the Patma Vibhushan. It's not just that, in 1997, our government recognized her with the Bharat Ratna. Bharat Ratna. Ratna means, you know, diamond, a very precious gemstone. So such kind of a gemstone for the entire nation. Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian honor. <clears throat> okay. Uh, a recognition that a common man, non-military people living in India can achieve is a Bharat Ratna. Before, below that is a Patma Bhushan. Patma Vibhushan. Below that is a Patma Vibhushan. Okay? So, it comes like that. So, in 1992, she was recognized with the Patma Vibhushan and in 1997, she was awarded with the Bharata Ratna. Okay, so all these years uh, since she joined the Indian uh, National Congress, say something around 1930, she had been engaged with a lot of activities for the uh, uh, empowerment of women, improving the standards of women and all. Right? So, just because of those efforts, and, and whatever she had done for the nation, she was awarded with the Patna Vibhushan and Bharata Ratna. She was such a great personality. So, India got freedom. She continued with her activities. And uh, meanwhile, somewhere she felt uh, the communist ideologies are better than uh, the, the policies of Indian National Congress. Because Indian National Congress was basically formed for the purpose of organizing the people so that we can have an organized movement against the British. Just that much. Okay. After getting freedom, it became more political in nature. So she was not much interested in that and she thought it's better to follow some other ideologies. So uh, she got separated from Indian National Congress and uh, she followed the communist uh, policies. Okay. Hmm. Communist, party, Communist party means what? It is a party which was uh, which originated in Russia when the people there uh, moved against the rulers there. Okay, they believe in a kind of equality for all people in the nation. Right. So she followed that ideology for a while. She followed the Communist Party for a while, but she came back to Congress in 1965. She came back to Congress in 1965. Uh, then she uh, became the mayor of a Delhi corporation and she became the first lady corporator, uh, mayor for the Delhi corporation. And she became the first lady mayor for the Delhi corporation. Okay? And this great life came to an end. A lot of incidents, a lot of uh, you know experience, a lot of efforts uh, who has changed the life of thousands of ladies in India or even abroad. The full stop for this life happened in 1996. In 1996, she breathed her last or she died in the year 1996. 
Okay? So, Tara's grandmother said all these stories about Aruna Asafali to her granddaughter Tara. And as they were walking, Tara suddenly remembered something. Tara was excited. Tara said, uh, Grandma, last time when we went to watch a movie, uh, we, uh, we heard somebody saying, we have crossed Aruna Asafali Mark. Mark means road. Okay, so one particular road in Delhi region is actually named after Aruna Asafali. We often name in the name of Mahatma Gandhi or Nehru Street, we call it, isn't it? So in respect or in a, uh, reverence towards those people, we name some regions or some roads or some areas after these people. Okay, so in the same way, when Tara along with her parents went to watch a movie, they crossed to this region called Aruna Asafali Mark. So she said, yeah, I remember. I remember. So we all people remember Aruna Asafali because of the efforts that she had taken towards empowering women and improving the standards of women all over India, even the world. Then Tara was excited and Tara said, Okay, Grandma, once when I grow up, I too will do some great things like that and I will make you proud. You will be proud to say that that girl, Tara, who did these kinds of things is my granddaughter. I will make you proud to tell that Tara is my granddaughter. Okay, so just like that, they told about the Arna Asafali. They walked back. Tara learned a lot about her. And uh, her grandmother told I used to read a lot of books about her. So when we read books, we definitely come to know a lot about these kinds of people. Their greatness. What they have done. How much they have suffered. Okay. So all these things we do come to know when we study about them. When we read about them. So Tara's grandmother had this habit of reading a lot when she was a child. Okay, there was no TV at that time when she was a child, there was no TV. So she read a lot of books, she read a lot of articles about her and some newspapers or magazines or something like that. And when she knew more about Aruna Asafali, she got inspired. She too decided, just like now what Tara said, I too should do something for the nation. Okay, and that was the reason she joined the freedom movement and that is how she became a freedom fighter. Okay, so this is the lesson part and now uh, we will go for the exercise part, right?